I have a proclamation I'd like to read. Uh, Mary Donahue and Barb Kleinschmidt would like to come up. <laughs> Whereas the purpose of the Catholic Daughters Organization is to participate in the religious, charitable, and educational apostolates of the Catholic Church, and whereas Catholic Daughters of the Americas engage in creative and spiritual programs which provide its members with the opportunity to develop their God-given talents in meaningful ways that positively influence the welfare of the Church and all people throughout the world. And whereas Catholic Daughters of the Americas strives to embrace the principle of faith, working through love and the promotion of justice, equality, and the advancement of human rights and human dignity for all, and whereas Court Winona No. 191 was the first, first Catholic daughter court established in the state of Minnesota in February 1913 and is celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. Now, therefore, I, Mark Peterson, Mayor of the City of Winona, Minnesota, do we hereby recognize the Winona Catholic daughters, Court No. 191, on their 100th anniversary celebration. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand to cause the seal of the city of Winona to be fixed this third day of June 2013. Congratulations. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much. Do you want to say a word? We're just glad to be a part of this community and to be able to do the kind of things that we do do for the benefit of this community. So thank you for um, sharing in our. 100 years. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to recognize our distinguished visitors here tonight from our sister city of Bitta, Poland, uh, Mayor Silka and the council president and their interpreter. They presented us the other day with a a framed picture of the castle from their town. We appreciate that. We will hang that in our special Bitta room. And uh, your gifts are here. Um, if you'd like to come up and get them, uh, it's a book, a uh, photograph book on Winona, um, color photographs, and some note cards uh, with sugar loaf and uh, canoes. One of the reasons they're here is to celebrate Father Paul Breeze's 50th anniversary as a priest. And I'd like to congratulate Father Breeze, who's also here tonight, for that very special uh, anniversary. And thank Tim Breeze for all of uh, the work he's done to organize their visit here and um, all the, uh, the planning and the, and the escorting that's been going on during their uh, week-long stay. Thank you, Tim. I'd also like to say thank you to uh, the folks with the Main Street program. Uh, last Saturday they did some uh, beautification work down at uh, the parking lot at 3rd and Center Street. Uh, it was very successful. I know they, they want me to thank uh, Mike Biggerstaff and Keith Nelson for their help from the city. And uh, we want to thank everybody involved with that project. And that's all I have. Judy? No report this evening. Okay. Roll call. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley. Here. Craig. Here. Alexander. Here. Iden. Here. Wojciechowski. Here. Double. Here. Under the required public hearings, item 2.1 is an appeal of the decision of the Board of Adjustment by Kemlin and Thomas Stockstill. All right. I'll open this uh, public hearing. The procedure will be. A um, few uh, procedural comments by me, and then I'll ask our uh, city attorney, Chris Hood, for any comments he might make, and then we'll allow five minutes for introductory comments by the city staff and Board of Adjustment, and then the appellants, uh, Kemlin Block Stockstill and Thomas Stockstill, shall have the opportunity to be, heard, to be heard by the city council and to show why the decision of the Board of Adjustment should be overruled or amended. You'll have up to 20 minutes to do that. 
and then there'd be an opportunity for other interested persons not already have it spoken to be heard, provided, however, that such testimony is limited to the issue on appeal and does not repeat testimony already presented by the appellant. Two minutes per person, not to exceed 10 minutes cumulatively. And then the city staff and the Board of Adjustment uh, will have an opportunity for a presentation on the variance request for up to 10 minutes, and then the public hearing will be closed. Legal counsel then can uh, present, and then questions from the council, and then uh, we'll make a decision. So, uh, City Attorney, Mr. Hood. Mary, you pretty much covered everything. So, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, do uh, anybody wish to speak? This would be the time. Introduce yourself and give your address. Okay. Uh, my name is Kemlin Fox Stockstill. I reside at 1063 West Broadway. This is my husband, Thomas Stockstill Jr. And I am appealing to the city council to review the decision made by the Board of Adjustments in allowing my business to obtain an additional employee that does not live in the household. Currently, my dog grooming business has grown to the point where I'm working myself crazy. And I have one employee that works with me, and I'm wanting to at least bump that up to two. Um, but the, it is zoned residential, so I need permission to be able to do that. It's, uh, it's zoned R2, and we're directly across the street from the right of the uh, business and business areas in that block. We're one house from the fire station. We're one block from the train uh, from the train track on Broadway. Very busy street. Uh, I think part of the reason for our appeal is it's our fault. We didn't make things clear. We muddled it up. All we really want to do is do what we've been doing since 2006. 2006. We want to do it better with one additional person. So we want to put one more person on the payroll so that Kim isn't working from uh, eight to six on average, six days a week. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't grown enough that we can buy a place in town. You guys know one well, well, better than we do. Not a lot of property available, especially in our budget. And yeah, the business has not grown to the degree that I can cover the type of overhead to have commercial buildings. The reason Cam started working at home in 2007 was Cashlin, our daughter, she's 11 now, was at home, so she was at home for her. And our son, Zachary, tried to leave that out of the equation in the last meeting, but Zach's a special needs child, Asperger's, bipolar type 2. So she's been home, she's, as soon as he got home from school, she's been the one home with him. And even now that he's 18, she still happens to be home with him. Decisions 